forget every care And you will find him waiting The Prince of Life is there He flows in the river Soars on the summer air His love is all around you The Prince of Life is there Open up your eyes Hello, my name is Mike Silver and we're going to change these props just a little bit here and this to my assistant. And thank you for joining us. Uh, the title of today's talk is God's Will. And we're going to start with a word of prayer. Lord, we uh, continue to lift up a good friend of ours, Janine, and her family right now in Texas. We just pray your touch on them. And we pray for Ukraine and all that's going on there. We just pray you bring an end to this. And we ask your touch on this talk because we're talking about your will, and we want your will to be done on the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So how do we determine what God's will is? Do we even need to worry about this? Well, yes, of course we do. First of all, knowing God's will helps us live as we should. It prepares us for eternity. God gives us laws and commandments to teach us his will in his word, the Bible, we learn about his nature and his will through creation. Finally, he has given us his spirit to teach us his will and how he expects us to live and what is good for us. Now, some might say, isn't this restrictive? Isn't this dogmatic? Doesn't this stifle us and keep us from being free to live our lives the way we want? Well, the serpent in the garden said almost the same thing to Eve. This is what he said. Has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? Eve replied, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said you shall not eat from it or touch it, or you will die. The serpent responded, You surely will not die. God knows that in the day that you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. You will be like him, knowing good and evil. In other words, Satan was saying God's putting restrictions on you because he doesn't want you to be like him. He doesn't want you to be free to do and to be whatever you want. He's being dogmatic. He's lying to you. The truth is that when Adam and Eve ate of the tree in disobedience to God and didn't follow God's will, they died. Death entered into their lives that day and they died. God did not want Adam and Eve to die. He specifically told them not to eat of the tree or they would die. 2 Peter 3, 9 says this, It is not God's will that anyone perish. This is not God's will for people to die. Now we're going to a place we call heaven where only the will of God is done. Jesus said, I am the way. No one gets to the Father or to heaven except through me. Now, some will say, well, that's restrictive, that's selfish, that's egotistical, that's dogmatic. Is being dogmatic always a bad thing? When you get into a plane, you hope the engineers that made the plane were dogmatic about the laws of aerodynamics when they designed the plane. You don't want to fall out of the sky. When we are planning our eternal destiny, we don't want to put our faith in something that's not true. We want to be sure. We want to be dogmatic. We want to be right. We don't want to make a mistake and end up somewhere where it's awfully hot, do we? We definitely want to be dogmatic about eternity and where we're going and how we get there. My philosophy is to know what God says. I don't want to know what I think per se or what anybody else thinks. I want to know what God thinks. You know, he's the final answer. I want to be dogmatic about knowing God's will for my life. We have a tendency to not take God seriously, to water down God's word or God's will in our lives. That's not a good idea. God created us. We didn't. He knows what we're made for and why. We don't. If we buy a car, don't we look at the owner's manual prepared by the automobile manufacturer to see how everything works? 
Aren't the engineers and the technicians the ones who design the cars we drive? Don't we have faith in them to explain to us how to drive a car? Then why can't we have faith in the creator of the universe to explain to us how we work? What we're supposed to become and how we are supposed to live. It's easier to live according to the will of God rather than to listen to anybody else, including ourselves. God is our creator. He is our designer. Whatever we have to go through in this life is going to be a lot easier if we follow God's will, if we follow his instructions. That's because this is what we were designed for. If we use a car in any way that is not according to the instruction manual, the car won't run properly. Or at best, it will run poorly. But if we follow the instructions the car makers give us, the car will run at its peak performance and in the way it is designed to run. We think that to go through the sacrifice it will take to allow God to work His will in our lives will mean we will have to give up too much. We will lose control. It will be too hard. We would rather not even try. It's too much. Exactly the opposite is true. In the long run, it will be harder to live not according to God's will than to live according to God's will. Just as it is harder not to operate a car according to the car maker's instructions. Jesus said this, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And then he said this, The way of the transgressor is hard. When we go to the other side, to heaven, we will clearly understand this. That had we been obedient to God in this life and given God full place in our lives to accomplish His will, we would have gotten through this life in a much easier manner and also reap the eternal rewards as well. If we're wise, we will understand this now and work to allow God to do His will in our lives today. Jesus said, Every plant my Father has not planted will be uprooted. Anyone who does not learn to live according to God's will will not endure. They will be uprooted. It's not a good idea to take this lightly. We have to be careful. There's a serpent out there who likes to whisper convincing lies into our ears. The description the Bible gives about the dwelling place for those who ignore the will of God is not a pleasant description. I don't think any of us want to go there. The following is a description of what it will be like to live where God's will is being done. In other words, in heaven. God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. There will no longer be any curse. There will no longer be any night. There will be no need of the light of a lamp nor the light of the sun because God himself will be among us, and He will illumine us. We will see God's face. Outside the city, in other words, outside heaven, and this is from the Bible, are all those who do not live according to the will of God. Jesus will say, I do not know you. Depart from me, all you who do evil, everyone who loves and practices lying. You will never enter my city. Outside there will be those who weep, when they see themselves being cast out of God's city. We don't want to be with them on the outside. We want to be inside the walls of the city. Jesus will say this to us. Blessed are those who learn to live according to the will of God. They will enter by my gates into my city, and they will not go out anymore. I will dwell among them, and they will be my people, and I will be their God. Isn't that wonderful? May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make His face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon us and give us His peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.